All right, I am going to work examples five through 10 from the parameter passing lab. And what I'll do is I'll write up here under types how the, um, whether the types are value types or reference types or which ones are which, and then what parameter passing method I'm using so that you can skip along to see um, solutions for different ones. Okay, so the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to pass, uh, I mean, our um, types are all going to be value types, as you see right here, and the parameter passing mode is going to be by value. So value types, all types being value types means that this array M will be stored in the stack frame, and then because we're passing by value, when this program P calls G on these two lines, calls G right, uh, this subprogram right here, passing M into A means that A is going to be a completely new copy of the array M in G's stack frame. So those are the things to watch out for here. Okay, so we are going to start this program, uh, and in order to start this program, I need to have a frame for it. So I will create a stack frame for program P here, and that stack frame is going to first um, store the array M. And so I'm not gonna draw all of these out uh, with lines, but you can think of me putting lines down for all the different slots in memory. We've got two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, and 17. And then we also have two local variables, x and y, I mean two more local variables, but they're just integers, x and y. And so those are going to go here, x and y, in this stack frame. And we will have the value of zero go into x and y go into one. All right, so at this point, we're gonna run the print line, which just prints m zero, which is two, m of one, three, m of two, five, x and y out. And so let's, um, those into the output over here. So we're going to get 2, 3, 5, 0, and 1. And then we're going to call G, passing M in for A, so the actual parameter is M for the formal parameter A, X in for B, and Y in for C. And again, we're doing value types passed by value, so we need to set up a stack frame for G. Stack frame for G is going to have uh, a slot for the array A and we're copying M into it. So two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17. And then we're going to have um, the parameters B and C here in the stack frame and they're being passed the values of X and Y. So we have a zero and a one there, all right. And now I'm going to execute the code of G. And so the thing to notice about the code of G is, uh, first of all, I've got no local variables other than my parameters. And then there is an, uh, an access to the variable Y, which is like, if you think about the referencing environment here, this is, we're assuming this is a statically scoped language. There's no Y in G, so the variable Y has to refer to its outer scope uh, P's Y. So P's Y is what this means. All the other ones are the actual parameters that are being accessed. Okay, so when I say A sub B equals zero, I am saying A sub B, which is zero, so that's this slot, and this is going to then change this to zero. Then I'm going to say B plus equals one, so B plus equals one, then I'm going to say y, which is this value, p's y, plus equals g's b. So I'm adding one to this value here. It becomes a two. And uh, finally, a sub c, so a sub one, which is this value, is going to become eight. And then I reach the end of G, and so I'm going to return, and because this is parameter passing by value and not by copy, nothing from here goes back into the, um, the parameters that were being, um, 
the actual parameters. Like actual, because this is passed by value, the value of the actual parameter goes into the um, formal parameter, but not backwards. Okay, so we're going to erase, uh, pop the stack, and now we're back at um, this point, and then we can do the fir the second print line here. So this time what we're going to do is print 2, 3, 5, 0, 2. So now let's do the second call to G. Uh, we need to set up, that's this one, and we're going to set up a second stack frame for G again, and it's going to start with A and then have B and C as well. We're copying again M in for A, so we get 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. Again, that was just copying these values up into here. And by the way, we're seeing uh, one of the, the downsides of pass by value, right? I keep passing this array up and down every time I call G. And this is why it's not necessarily always the most efficient, or it's not that efficient of a solution because I have to copy large amounts of data to make this call. Um, okay, and now I'm passing the value, the, uh, my actual parameter for both B and C is Y. And so I'm passing in two for B and two for C. And then let's execute the code again. I'm gonna do it a little faster. Again, I'm going to be running through these lines of code right here. So A sub B is A sub two uh, equals zero. B plus equals one. Then uh, Y plus equals B. So this becomes five. And then A sub C, which is this value again, becomes eight. And then I am going to return from G and print out two, three, five, zero, five. Okay. And that is uh, the end of that problem. Okay, now we're going to um, pass by, uh, have types that are still value types like before, but this time we're going to have a value result parameter passing mode or the pass by copy. And also notice when, because of the result, things are gonna, the value of B is gonna come back in and the value of C is gonna come back in. And notice that when I have the same actual parameter for two different formal parameters, it matters whether Y is getting the value of B and then Y is getting the value of C or if Y is getting the value of C and then Y is getting the value of B, right? The order in which I bring things back in is now going to matter and so I have to specify that. So what we've specified here is right to left assigned. Okay, so now let's run this thing. All right, so again, we start with the stack frame for P. We have the array M. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. We have X, which is zero, and Y, which is one. And now we're going to call, uh, well, first we're gonna print this, 2, 3, 5, 0, 1. And then we're gonna call G, and we're because we're both pass by value in result, the initial part of calling G looks the same. I still have to copy all my values up from my actual, whatever my actual parameters are, they need to go into the formal parameters. But then what's gonna change is at the end of G, I have to bring values back down. That's what we're gonna see change. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, this isn't M, it's A and G. So I'm gonna have A copying the values two, three, five, seven, eleven. 13, 17, and then I'm going to have uh, B and C, and they get zero and one initially um, because I'm passing X and Y in. And now I'm gonna run the code, and to run the code, let's do it uh, A sub B gets zero, B plus equals one, Y plus equals B, 
uh, a sub c gets 8. So now I've run the code, but now I actually have to copy everything back down. So where did a uh, map to? Well, it maps to m. That's what uh, the actual parameter that got passed into a was m. And so now the value of a is going to be copied back into the value of m. Similarly, um, the value of b is going back into x and the value of c is going back into y, and we're going to do it um, from left to right in the call. So I'm going to copy the value back of a into m, then b into x, then c into y, left to right in the parameter list. And so um, this is first, this is second, this is third. So this becomes 0, 8, 5, Seven. And I'm doing this on purpose to really drive home that it it's going to be copying all that memory down, right? Even though the values are the same. Uh, then the one comes in down here, and the one comes in down here. And so this is the new, um, new value of the stack after I finish that call. And now we just need to erase all of this to finish popping the stack and now we're ready for the second call to G. So before I make the second call to G I need to do that second print line which is going to print 0, 8, 5, 1, and 1. And the thing I just realized is this is right to left not left to right so I should have done right to left, C into Y, then B into X, then A into M. It didn't matter in this case because the, these aren't, none of these are the same variable twice, like in the next call. So it didn't change the outcome. But uh, if I was doing it properly, I should have done it right to left assign. That's what that means. So I probably confused everybody, but I'm going to press on regardless. So now we are going to do the second call. To G. So we're going to set up a stack frame for G, give it an A, which gets copied up, 0, 8, 5, 7, 11, 13. That should have been a, uh, oh, whoops, um, that was a 17 that got erased. 17, and then into B and C, we're copying the current value of Y uh, in each case. Okay, so now we're going to execute the code. A sub B, which is this slot, becomes 0. Uh, B plus equals 1, so this becomes 2. Y down here plus equals the current value of B. 1 plus 2 is 3. And then A sub C gets 8. And now I'm going to copy them back down, and I'm going to copy them back down from right to left. So uh, we take... The rightmost, which was uh, y is the actual parameter, and c is the formal parameter, and so I replace the value of y with c. Then the next one, uh, y is the actual parameter again, and b is the formal, so the formal's value gets copied out. And finally, I copy a back into m to get 0, 8, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, thus making that copy back out. And finally, print uh, the final print line, 0, 8, 5, 1, 2. Okay, so now let's um, do all types or value types, but the parameter passing is done by reference. So we'll start again the same way where we always start here by setting up P's stack frame. So P, uh, because value types still, so the array is still going to go in here, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and then X and Y, which are going to be 0 and 1. And now we're going to do that print line. I don't, we really shouldn't even do this print line because this one just prints out the same thing no matter what. That's okay. 2, 3, 5, 0, 1. And now I'm going to call G, and G has three parameters, but now we're passing by reference. So these parameters are not as big, uh, or at least the array 
is certainly not as big because really this is um, getting the address of, so I'm going to use ampersand like in C as the address of, to mean the address of. It's getting the address of M, which I would normally draw as an arrow down to M. And B is getting the address of X. Re remember, I'm doing this first call here. And then C is going to get the address of Y. And so um, C gets the address of Y. Let's draw these as references to kind of help us keep track of everything. All right. And now we're going to run the code, but any time in the code, like when I access B, what I'm really doing is implicitly dereferencing because this behaves now like a reference type. Um, and so let's see what we get this time. A sub B is really M sub um, X, so we're accessing this location here and setting it equal to zero. B, which is implicitly referencing X, plus equals one. Y plus equals B, uh, which is, so Y is referencing, um, or Y is here, and B is referencing X, so I add, take the value of X and add it there. Two. And then finally, A, which is A sub C, and C is currently 2, so A sub C is this value. A sub C gets the value of 8. And then I hit the end of G and pop the stack here. So we pop the stack, including erasing all of my reference arrows, and... Uh, now we can do the next line of output. It's going to be 0, 3, 8, 1, 2. Okay, and uh, so now we've done this line here, and we need to do the, well, the, the print line there. And now we need to do um, the call to G again and the next print line. So let's set up G again. G has A, B, and C. A is being passed the address to M as before. Y is now being passed into B. So this is the address of Y, and this is the address of Y. And so both of these are referring to this same value. And A is referring to M. So that's what I get from this line. Um, and now let's run the code. So we're going to say A, which is M, sub B, which is Y. So really this line here in this version is m sub y, because a refers to m and b refers to y. So m sub 2, 0, 1, 2, is this value is going to turn to 0. Okay, b, which is y, plus equals 1, so this turns to 3. Then y plus equals b, well, b refers back to y, so this just doubles its value to 6. And then a sub, uh, which is m, sub c, which is y, which is 6, so we're doing m of 6 on this last line, gets 8, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This one becomes 8, and now we're going to return, and uh, print out the values, so it's 0, 3, 0, 1, 6 that we will print out. Okay, so now we've switched things up. Uh, we are now going to look at types being reference types, but the references are passed by value. This is what Java does. So Java passes by value, except that everything but primitive types are actually reference types. So this is what Java does with non-reference types. And so sometimes people get confused and say Java passes by reference. It does not. It passes references by value. And we're going to see the difference uh, in this uh, version. And to do this, we're going to need some heap space because now we have reference types. So I can't just draw the stack anymore. So to start off, the program P now looks a lot simpler because uh, M, X, and Y are now each references to wherever their heap objects are. 
So M is going to be some array. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17. And it's a reference to that. And all types are reference types here, so even the primitives, unlike Java. So X is going to um, refer to some integer in memory in the heap, and Y is going to refer to some integer in memory. And so that's a reference, and that's a reference. And so now what we're going to do is run this program again, like we've been seeing. Okay, so now I um, am first going to print out two, the same as always, two, three, five, zero, one. And then I'm going to call G, and G is going to have its A, B, and C values as well. But what's the value? Uh, we're passing by value. And we're passing the value of m into a, but the value is the address. So really, I've drawn an arrow, but this is really the address of that object over in the heap, wherever this happens to be, right? So a is just going to refer to the same object in the heap because it's not a copy. The copy that's being made is a copy of what's in here, which is the actual reference to where this is in the heap. So the reference goes up and the arrow gets copied. And so B is going to be past X, and C is going to be past Y, and so this is now the picture, and uh, now I can run the code. A sub B is um, A sub B, which is zero, so that's this location, gets set to zero. So actually I better erase. That's a big eraser, but we'll make do. Uh, then b plus equals 1, so um, let's try and just hit that, b, oh whoops, that's not b, b is uh, over here, b is referring to this, so we're going to add 1 to it, then y, which refers to this object, plus equals b, so this is now going to be 2, and then a, sub c, which is 2, gets 8, and so the 5 here turns to an 8. And then I return from g, so let's erase, oh, I shouldn't have erased that, shoot, uh, undo, there we go. Um, Got to be really careful now, I think this picture is messy with all these arrows. Okay, and now I can print out the value, 0, 3, 8. 1, 2, and now I'm going to call G again, and this time A again is a reference to the same array M, but both B and C are set as references to Y, and so this time the picture looks like so, and so now uh, we got to run the code A sub 2 is 0, and so a sub 2 is right there, so this is turning to 0, let me put that 7 back in there, b plus equals 1, so this is now going to be 3, and y plus equals b is going to make it 6 again, and then a sub 6 is going to get um, 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the last one. This is going to be 8. And then I return. So this returns. And I print out the value at the last. m sub 0, m sub 1, m sub 2 is 0, 3, 0, 1, 6. Okay, for this one, the int type is a value type and the array type is a reference type. So this time, and this, is, by the way, is exactly how Java would do this, All right? Because uh, int is a primitive and primitives are value types in Java and an array is an object and objects are reference types in Java, okay? So um, let's run P again, and so we have, slots for m, 
x and y, and this time uh, m is a reference to the array in the heap. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and x is 0 and y is 1. And now we go ahead and print 2, 3, 5, and then we call g. And everything's passed by value. Um, and so the, particularly the, uh, so c is going to get 1, b is going to get 0, and, um, and a is going to get the reference passed into it by value. So the address stored here was passed into the address stored here. And now we're going to run the code. A sub B gets uh, so there. A sub B is going to get 0. Um, B plus equals 1. So this is going to turn into 1. Y plus equals B. So this is going to turn into 2 and uh, a sub c is um, going to be eight, so we're just gonna make that an eight there, and then we return, which just pops the stack, and now we're going to print the, um, oh, I forgot to print x and y before, that should have been zero, one. Now we're gonna print the same thing, zero, eight, five, zero, two and call g again. A gets past the same value, and y is getting copied in twice for b and c. And so um, let's run the code again. A sub b is uh, zero, so it's gonna zero out right there. a sub b, then um, b plus equals 1, y plus equals b, 5, um, and now a sub c, which is 2, gets uh, 8, and so that turns that a sub c to 8, and then we return Popping this off the stack, and we print out zero eight eight zero five. Okay. So for the final one, it's the same setup except we're going to do pass by value result this time, and uh, so int is still a value type, array is a reference type. So we're gonna have this big array here. Two, three, five, I shouldn't just make a little more room. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, and 17. There we go, and x is zero and one, and we print out two, three, five, zero, one. Then we call g. G gets the reference passed by value, the value of A, uh, uh, sorry, this should be A, B, and C. The value of B is zero, value of C is one, and so now uh, A sub B gets zero, turning this to zero. B plus equals one, turning this to one. Y plus equals B, turning this to 2, a sub c gets 8, turning this to 8, and now we return and we go right to left, and so we're going to um, copy the value of c back into y, and copy the value of b back into x, so these values up here are now going down that way. And then we copy the address over, but it doesn't change anything, so I won't draw anything for that. And there is the result. 
And so now we're going to call um, printout 08511, and then we're going to call G again. A is just a reference to the same array. Um, B and C both get the current value of Y, which is 1. And A sub 1 is 0. B plus equals 1 goes to 2. Y plus equals B goes to 3. Uh, A sub C turns back to 8. And now I copy the values right to left, so I overwrite y with c and then y with b on return. And then I end up printing out, uh, so I guess I should pop this, 08512.